I will speak to you in plain, simple English. And that brings us to tonight's word. Truthiness. <laughs> now, I'm sure some of the word police, the wordinistas over at Webster's, are gonna say, hey, that's not a word. Well, anybody who knows me know that I'm no fan of dictionaries or reference books. They're elitist. Constantly telling us what is or isn't true or what did or didn't happen. Who's Britannica to tell me the Panama Canal was finished in 1914? If I want to say it happened in 1941, that's my right. I don't trust books. They're all fact, no heart. The truthiness is anyone can read the news to you. I promise to feel the news at you. That was a clip from the very first episode of The Colbert Report back in 2005, in which Stephen Colbert's right-wing character coined the phrase truthiness. Now, that is how Kurt Anderson sets up his cover piece in the new issue of The Atlantic, How America Went Haywire. In it, he breaks down the country's long and complicated relationship with the truth. And Kurt Anderson joins me now on the set. Truthiness. It, it, when he said that, people got it. They did. And as you say, it was the first minutes of his first show. Right. And I really got it. It, 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 it for me crystallized a whole bunch of things that had been going through my mind for a few years yeah. and 13 years later uh, I, we have this article and book as a result. Right. So take us through your article your your article and your argument because um, mm -hmm. you say starting about like the 1960s is when the concept of truth starts to get fuzzy. Exactly. So, Take us through the decades. Well, I, and, and I just want to say that my, my argument begins back in the 1500s, that this That's has true. always been in the American bloodstream. Right. And in the 60s, it really began getting out of control, that the do your own thing, find your own truth, create your own reality thinking mm -hmm. and paradigm of the 60s really became part of our mental equipment, scaled up in the 70s, became mass market. And then with the Internet, um, every... Every faction of reality and pseudo truth could have its own websites, news feeds, everything. Right. And, and here we are. That's the basic and argument. And here we are today. But like you said, your argument starts way before that, almost sort of with the birth of the nation. It, I'm that, afraid this so. This is the yeah. most fascinating part, yeah. I think, of your argument. Yeah. That you basically say what has made this country exceptional, what has made this country great, if you will, yeah. are the same things that make us. Uh, have a complicated relationship with the truth. And, and, right. and complicated is one of those charitable terms you say <laughs> yes. about boyfriends. Right. For instance. <laughs> um, yes, we, we've always been true believers and dreamers. We can find gold. We can create utopia here. Let's come here. It'll be, we'll be free. We can do whatever we want. We can think whatever right. we want. And all those are true. And that is part of our, our success and moxie. But it's always, or it was always, in balance with the kind of Yankee practicality and pragmatism and reality checks that I argue starting in the 1960s in late 60s uh, kind of went out got out of whack that balance and part of the reason that we are talking about this now is because of the 2016 election yeah. and the emergence of fake news yeah. which has always been around but now it had a name and the emergence of alternative facts yeah. um, and the election of President Trump yeah. and you write that the president doesn't like experts. These are your words. The president doesn't like experts because they interfere with his right as an American to believe or pretend that fictions are facts. Um, when I read that, I thought, you hear this all the time. I have, an, I have a right to my opinion. Well, exactly. And, and, and Daniel Patrick Moynihan famously said back in the 80s and 90s when he was a senator, everybody is entitled to their own opinions, but you're not entitled to your own facts. Yeah. And that's, that's, and he was, it was a clarion call early on, and, and now p many, many, many people, including often our president, uh, feels entitled to his or their own facts. And by the way, I just want to make clear, I, I started writing this book and finished the draft of this book way before uh, Donald Trump was even nominated for president, Yeah. which is to say it's a history. It's been there for a long time, as you say, all fake news and all that, but it has accelerated very quickly in, let's say, this century. Right. Is there an argument that suggests that perhaps the nature of a fact and the nature of truth has evolved and 
that is the nature of information and words that once upon a time, uh, you know, there was a single source for the truth and it's no longer the case. That doesn't necessarily mean that some facts are not facts right. or not the truth. Right. Now we have more information. So the truth is an amoeba. Well, that that, that's, a very, that's a very good and very smart point. And, and, and that is the point that academics have been making since the 60s that, oh, no, truth is this relative thing. Right. We got relativism. Well, and that's true to an extent. Again, my argument is that in moderation, everything's almost everything's OK. But that idea that everything is relative and science is the same as religion and empirical truth is the same as whatever I feel, my truthiness, that's where it, it, it gets out of control and, 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 has, and has gotten out of control and has led us to some, I think, dangerous places. So we know that the internet factors into this mm. because you can pretty much, like you said, find uh, support for any argument Correct. that you can sort of think up. But how responsible are we, members of the media? Uh, just CBS in particular. No. <laughs> um, uh, uh, sh members of the media and, uh, and media broadly construed, yeah. I, I, I include just not just the news media, but but book publishing and 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 you know channels cable nonfiction cable channels that are doing documentaries about mermaids, mm -hmm. for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, th there are many many people uh, share responsibility for this. Yeah. And again, share responsibility as I explained in the book over the last several decades. It didn't just happen in 2016. Yeah. Um, Donald Trump is the kind of uh, embodiment and final not final but. An ultimate expression of of uh, a set of American beliefs, attitudes, hankerings that have been uh, have reached their kind of ripe period just recently, and he took advantage of that. Yeah, can we put the genie back in the bottle? I mean, where does this go from here? Are we going to sort of is the pendulum going to swing, and we're just going to be sort of sick and tired of? you know, multiple studies that say coffee drinking is either good or bad yeah, for your health, yeah. and we don't know what a clear answer is. Well, that's a different question. There's, I mean, science, that's the way science works, yeah. of course, is, is people, but you think something, but that's always provisional, and you find out the new thing, and then coffee, by the way, coffee is great. That's the final. Well, uh, you know I love it, because yeah. I get up at, you know, I'm here but at 2 a.m. <laughs> I think in the larger sense, in the sense I'm talking about, no, I, I, I want to believe that. I want to believe the pendulum will swing yeah. back. But I believe, the, and the pendulum may swing back, but it's not going to swing back to where it was. I, 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 think, uh, I think the genie is out of the bottle. And I think we, in the reality-based community, can, can endeavor to, to tell the factual truth yeah. and, and, and not entertain baseless conspiracy theories and all of it. And, and call out our friends and acquaintances and relatives when they uh, go there. I, I, I think we can contain it. I don't think we can roll it back. Um, did you know the University of Washington has a course called Calling BS? So I've heard. It's all about that, the <laughs> yeah. study of identifying BS. Who would have thought you'd needed that? Listen, you've been covering Donald Trump since the 80s. I have. Right, so you know this man. Is he basically the same guy? He, well, yes, he is the same guy. Although, if you, it's interesting to look back at tapes of him in the 80s and 90s when, I was, when he was a, 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 a subject of mine. Uh, he was not just younger, but much more... Uh, coherent and even seemingly happy. <laughs> he never seems happy to me now. Right. And he seldom goes on for more than a sentence uh, very coherently. But he basically the same guy, basically the same guy who in this central fact of attention, media attention, is, is, is as important to him as food and water and air are to us mm -hmm. or drugs are to addicts. Mm -hmm. I, I really think that's his distinguishing characteristic. And uh, for uh, and and he's now got more media attention than anybody perhaps has ever had. Mm -hmm. One more question: In this era where truthiness exists, um, is a lie still a lie? Uh, well, I th again, I, I I I think we have to be careful about what we call lies. Mm -hmm. Many of thing many of the things, for instance, that the president says are lies because he knows they aren't true and says them. But if if one doesn't care about the distinction between truth and falsehood, is one lying? Not necessarily. But, but my point is that just a lie may be the worst because you knew it was a wrong, untrue and you said it anyway. Mm -hmm. but, but, sim but sincerely believing untrue things is really terrible too, even though you're not morally culpable in a certain way for believing the untrue thing. Kurt Anderson, it is a fascinating article. Thank you. I'm sure it's an even more fascinating thank book. You. And thank you so much for joining My us. My pleasure.